Hi, I'm Casey Gray, Sorcerer by the Sea, and this is D&D Expertise, Episode 4. If you happen across a copy of Strixhaven, A Curriculum of Chaos, you'll see what happens when Wizards of the Coast leaves their homework until the night before it's due. It has some really good ideas in it, and many more that should be, but aren't. Let's talk about the NPCs first, since, as the first official D&D dating sim content, people are excited. I'm happy to say that there are plenty of cute wizards to flirt with and befriend. One of them is actively trans-affirming, so that's a goddamn home run right there. Being friendly with somebody gets you one point, and being actively rude does the opposite, revolutionizing modern game design. After having two of these encounters, you've got a solid enough connection to determine if they're your comrade for life or bitter rival, because using three data points to establish a pattern is for losers. Be nice one more time, and now they can be a beloved. And credit where due, because this might actually fix inspiration into a mechanic that gets used by making it a resource pool instead of a one-off. Every morning, you wake up with an extra point of inspiration per beloved, instead of the single one that always gets forgotten and goes unspent. So, maybe start min-maxing your social circle, because you can have as many beloved as you have proficiency, and BFF is just as valid as Paramore. This easily could and should have been a set of qualitative categories, moving from acquaintance to friend to confidant. But no, we keep score like pushing friendship coins into a vending machine, and instead of a refreshing Pepsi Cola, the taste of a generation, you get a half-decent boon. Some are fun, like whenever you need anything heavy moved, members of the Iron Lifters Society show up to help you. Others give you a 25% chance for a 50% discount, offering all the adventure and drama of a customer loyalty card at your local grocery store. The Banes from rival relationships tragically miss a critical piece of good game design. These should be mechanics that encourage you to get into a rivalry with someone and create drama. Instead, they just explain how that character can screw with you. The other problem with the relationship system is that it's one-sided, and the NPCs don't have any autonomy of their own. If you decide you want to date someone, you just keep bumping into them like an affectionate Roomba until they reciprocate. There's no rules that support having a crush on someone and asking them out only to find out that they don't feel the same way, or they're already in a relationship with someone else. Likewise, there's no opportunity to be surprised when someone asks you out and you have to decide whether that's something you want to explore with them or not. It robs you of all the emotional highs and lows that dating in school actually offers and instead leads you to write fanfic about collecting whoever you're interested in like a Pokemon in tall grass. When it comes to classes, all they give you is the name, no professor personae or random events to remind you you're actually a student and not just an adventurer with house colors. It's just a list of things that could be interesting, but aren't. The only studying you're able to do is a skill check to cram before the letdown that is two more skill checks called an exam, denying you the iconic college experience of committing to too many extracurriculars and having to manage your time between dates, clubs, and jobs to keep your grades from suffering. This book about a magical school absolutely shorts you on anything that actually has to do with the experience of getting an education. Did you actually want to learn something about glyphs of warding when your character takes the exam? Hope you know how to use Google, because the book doesn't tell you anything about the subject, making it impossible to call back on later for a scene when you put your newfound knowledge to use. If the Philosopher's Stone were in this book, you'd get it by proceeding on a perception check followed by an arcana check. If you can roll above a 15 with bonuses and rerolls twice in a row, then you're an a student. On the bright side, they do go out of their way to talk about how all of Strixhaven has accessibility accommodations. It's welcoming to characters and to players, since it's a great entry point for people whose knowledge of magic in D&D doesn't run quite as deep. They're not allowed to say Quidditch, but I am. Quidditch. Year 3 is centered around forming a team to compete in the magical sport of Mage Tower. It's time for a year of practice and competition, culminating in an exciting tournament arc where you climb through the ever more challenging brackets until the final match. You're going to be writing all that shit yourself though, because if you haven't gotten the theme by now, it's that no part of the classic genre experience is within these pages. There is one match of Mage Tower in your entire time at Strixhaven. It takes place at the end of the year. 
Two teams are randomly drawn from the entire pool of submissions to compete, and yours is one of them, because you're the chosen ones. You make two ability checks for each of three rounds, and then you win. The game that the entire year is supposed to revolve around has no real gameplay to it, and, while you still don't actually get to play on the practice field, its map has some neat elevation elements. The actual stadium is the most boring battlefield that exists. A wide open, flat, grassy field with no terrain. The locker room gets more detail. There are pages upon pages of shitty dungeon crawls on maps I don't care about. Now, there's an engagement I actually want to see play out, but the Sorceress Super Bowl gets skipped past like an any percent speedrun. There's a token mystery that the book respects as little as I do, because the two bad guys of the year come and commit suicide by adventurer in the locker room after the game. It's not like you could have been sneaking around after dark investigating anyway, because there's no info on the dorms or any aspect of your daily student life to play around in. There's no system for getting detention if you're caught skulking by staff. No adventure. This is a book that should have been all systems and modular content to brew your own Strixhaven adventure. Instead, they just made the good parts harder to extract by jamming pieces together into something resembling a plot, and it means neither is good enough. You should use this book, but expect to do some serious heavy lifting to hack it apart and build something that actually hangs together, and you don't have the Iron Lifter Society to help you on that. I'd give Wizards of the Coast the opportunity to redo the assignment, but since they printed physical books, they're pretty committed to this inadequate academy.